Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our quick shoot series. Hey guys, look what I just picked up. A Sega Master System Model 2. Now, uh, a few of you out there who are diligent and have watched all my stuff might actually know that I already have a Sega Master System Model 2. Um, I have this one. This is a, a PAL Sega Master System Model 2 that uh, my friend Raymond actually modded for me um, with uh, composite and S-Video and even put SCART on there so I can use it with a SCART to component adapter and he added a little light. And of course he got rid of the RF in favor of all of these, which is great. Um, now the reason I would pick this up is, uh, well like I said, I have the PAL one because in uh, the European PAL version which, as you can see, is a different color, but that's about that's about the only difference, is far more common. Um, those, those gray ones, the North American unit is extraordinarily rare. They really didn't make a whole lot of those for the U.S. and Canada because the Master System never took off here in the first place. And as good as this thing is, you know, I had to get it modded to even use it because uh, PAL RF just simply does not work in uh, in the States. It's just, it's almost like a completely different format. So I always kind of wanted to get my hands on the original one, or, well, the original American Model 2, which I always figured would just basically never happen, because I've never seen one in real life, ever. Like, I've never seen one in person, until I walked into a store, and they had this, and this collection of games, all for 40 bucks. And I think it's because they didn't really know what it was, uh, which is fine with me, you know. So, basically what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to open up these games, kind of give you a you know, just kind of show you which ones I got quickly. And then we're going to clean this up because, yeah, I want to show everybody out there how to clean a Sega Master System Model 2. But before I do that, uh, let's take a look at um, the games here. Uh, rip this open. As you can tell, I have not used this thing. I just got it, obviously. Uh, standard power supply that goes with it. Uh, RF cable. That is, sadly, this uh, Model 2 only supports RF, which is, again, why I got the other one modded, well, in addition to just flat out being able to use it. Um, a single controller, which is okay, I got a few of those. Um, and then we got some games. We got a loose cartridge of Ghostbusters, which uh, is actually a uh, superior version of that original horrible Ghostbusters game over the NES version, so that's a nice little bonus. Uh, Outrun. Um, what else we got? Choplifter. And then we got a couple of uh, box games here. I don't know if they're complete or not. I guess we'll find out. First I got Aztec Adventure. Looks to be complete. Looks like it has some kind of poster in it, too. Uh, Rocky. All, well, yeah, that's complete. Uh, Ken Sidon. Also complete. Some kind of poster. And Great Basketball. Also complete with a poster. So that's cool. It's a, it's a nice little bonus on the games because uh, I don't have a whole lot of Sega Master System games and none of these are doubles for me, which is fantastic. And I could always use another controller, backup power supply, and well, I don't really need more RF cables, but yeah. So let's take a look at the system. Uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, it's just, you know, a little dirty, a little, little scuffed up, and it's got some adhesive marks from probably some stickers in the past, but overall it's not too bad. So, uh, hopefully if you're watching this to restore your Master System 2, yours is a little bit, I don't want to say, I don't want to hope that yours is more beaten up, but odds are it's a little bit dirtier if you're watching this. So, uh, all we're going to do is just give it a basic cleaning. And, um, in order to get into this thing, you need a Phillips head screwdriver, and, uh, because it doesn't use game bits or anything. It's got, uh, one, two, three, four five screw points on the bottom and uh, all you do is take your Phillips head screwdriver and uh, unscrew it. Okay, so once you have your screws out, this is pretty simple. You basically just pick up and lift it off. It's really nothing to that. And on the inside we see that there's, uh, well, there's a few cobwebs actually in there and some dust and dirt. That'll clean up pretty easily. Uh, let's get to, well actually let's take a look in here. A lot of dirt in there, so we'll get that out. Uh, let's start here though. Uh, let's remove some of these, uh, or at least one of these buttons. I'm going to remove the uh, reset button here. Push that, pull that up, and out comes that. That's easily cleaned up. Um, this one, on the other hand, looks a little bit more complicated. So, believe it or not, I'm actually not going to mess with that because that looks like that would be really hard to remove. 
And I know from personal experience in the past that uh, this plastic piece here is nearly impossible to get out, so don't even try. Just leave that alone. You can clean it up with it that way. So that's really only the two pieces there, is the small one and the lid. And then we'll get down to this. Now we're going to take the board out, and it looks like there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws there. And you'll probably have to remove the cartridge slot screws as well. So I've taken all the screws out, and here's what you need to know. There's two little screw holes right there on the left. See that? They both have this same type of screw, this little one with like thinner threads. Make sure those two are, you remember to isolate those because they go there. The, uh, these screws are the ones that go on the rest of the sides, and then these two black ones go on the cartridge slot. So once you've actually removed all those, like I have, and again, make sure you sort them properly, you basically just lift up and the entire board comes out like that. And then we look inside and it's pretty dusty. There's a big clump of dust there. That's pretty gross. And uh, yeah, so I'll just put that off to the side and we're going to clean this up with soap and water. It's looking a lot better, I think. Uh, dust is all gone, but uh, there's still certain things I can't get rid of with just that. There's some scuff marks that are on here. There's one there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser. And uh, I've shown this many times. It's basically just like a uh, sandpaper type, very fine sandpaper with uh, some bleach in it. And basically what you do is you take it and you rub it along wherever these like little white scuff marks are. And you just go like that back and forth. And it gradually will take the, um, the white scuff marks out. Um, you, although you kind of have to go over it a few times, depending on how bad they are. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep doing that here on the bottom. See, that one's just completely annihilated now. Uh, there's one there. I'm going to go to that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go all over the system. I hope you guys can see that anyway. Uh, uh, there, There's one that's kind of bad right there. You can see that. And uh, I'll go at it on there. And all right, as you can see, now it's completely gone. Now, of course, it leaves a little bit of dust on there, but that's no big deal because I can just go and rinse it again. So, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and go over the whole system and make sure I find any of those scuffs and just get rid of them. But uh, be careful with Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser if you use it. If I had gone any closer to this logo, I would have torn it right off. This stuff is powerful, so just be careful when you use it. They're rinsed off. All that dust is gone, too. So now it's time to put these aside and let them dry. And uh, while they dry, we can do a couple of things. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the uh, the board. Very small little board, nice and compact design. Unfortunately, RF only, but what are you going to do? Uh, so we can do a few things to this. The uh, standard procedure for me, anyway, is I always take um, uh, compressed air, and I blow it around inside and get as much just dust out of there as possible. So I'll just go ahead and do that very quickly. I don't know how well you guys are seeing that, but there's a lot of dust chunks just flying out. Big dust chunk just came out of the cartridge slot, and that's it's always good to get those out. Alright, now, uh, <laughs> okay, I've done that a lot. I'll probably keep doing that in a bit, but uh, I don't want to bore you. I'll move on. Um, in addition to that, you can also take uh, Q-tips if you want, and you can uh, rub along... Well, actually... I didn't even realize this. You can lift the top off. How convenient is that? Um, so actually, we can get to all these. Well, if you want to see, that's what a Sega Master System's guts look like. And there's this big. What the hell is this? Look at this. There's a big chunk of plastic and dust. That's gross. I don't know what that is. Um, doesn't look like anything's broken though. So I don't know what the hell that is. Um, anyway. We can take this uh, Q-tip and we can rub it along, you know, on the the board a little bit, and try to get uh, any just excess dust that's just sitting on there and get it out of there. But uh, overall, inside this thing actually looks pretty good. I mean, there's there is some dust that's coming off, but yeah, you could go ahead and uh, try to get some of that stuff off if you want. Um, most importantly, you know, you want to get inside the uh, well. You'd have to spray some Windex on this first. Uh, <clears throat> Windex or window lean. Certain parts of the world use window lean instead of Windex. Uh, it, it's just an ammonia based uh, glass cleaner. You guys have heard me talk about this at nauseum a lot, and I really wish Windex would send me a check. That would be wonderful. But uh, what I do is I clean the contacts in here a little bit. Though controller ports, especially 
Genesis slash Master System controller ports really don't have any problems that often, so unless they're bent. So what I do is I would just kind of rub and clean some of the plastic around them to make them at least look nicer. That's really all you're doing, though. Um, but the most important thing, which we have not addressed yet, and we shall right now, is to clean the uh, cartridge slot. Now, obviously, blowing some compressed in there, air in there got some dust out, but uh, there's definitely more we can do. And uh, the thing we can do is use a cartridge cleaning kit. Or, um, well, I realize most people don't have this or can't get this. So the alternative is to do what's called the credit card method. You take a credit card, wrap it in felt cloth, and do what I'm about to do. You take a your little device, whatever it is, and you spray some Windex or window lean or whatever you've got, and uh, you kind of rub it on there a little bit, both sides, like that, and then you just stick it in the cartridge contacts. Although, apparently, I've picked a one that is too big, so <laughs> I will have to, see, you know, this is not scripted. I do screw up. Let's see, what else have we got here that's smaller, perhaps? Hmm, no. Get that out of the way. <sighs> How about uh, this one? Would that fit? Yes, it would. So, now, take two, everybody. Uh, go ahead and spray that on there, like that. And rub it on both sides, just like before. And then, no, there's a little hair sticking out of there, so we should get that out of the way. Okay. Come on. Okay, there we go. And then you stick it in the cartridge contact, just like this. Up and down a couple of times. And then uh, check, you know, I'm going to rub some dust off of my finger. There we go. bunch of dust that was stuck inside there. It's now released, which uh, means that the, well, the contacts are cleaner, and it's far more likely that it will be able to read games. And it probably works, honestly. It seemed like it was in de pretty decent shape, and it had a bunch of games with it, so odds are it does work. But all the same, why you know, risk having to deal with cleaning cartridges very often and fiddling with the system when I can clean it right now and make it work even better? So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it as far as cleaning that. I would also recommend that after you do that, you blow around some compressed air in there. Make sure you get excess moisture out of there. You don't want to leave any in there. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it as far as cleaning the board. Uh, go over it and get some dust out of there. But now I'm just going to put the um, little RF shield back on, tighten that back up. And, uh, yeah, maybe I'll get some dust off the uh, sides here on the RF shield. Not that that really has any real purpose, but it's nicer to just get some dust off. So you could use, actually, a, a Q-tip's not the most efficient way to do that. Probably get a paper towel and... Wipe down the RF shield a bit. That's probably what I'll do. Gross. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm just going to now play the waiting game, actually. Or you know what? No, how about this? I will show you how to clean Sega Master System cartridges. So I've decided I will clean up Ghostbusters for you. I would have cleaned this Master System controller and shown you how to do that, but with the exception of this sticker on the back, which whoever bought this originally paid 20 bucks for this controller. Damn, you got ripped off. But, um... Uh, this is not dirty enough, so all I'm going to do is just put some adhesive remover on this. And, uh, in fact, if you want to see that, I can show you that. That's not super exciting. I just use an adhesive remover like this, and uh, you just put it on the back. This is great for stickers in general. You just kind of put it like that, and then uh, let it sit for a few minutes, and then you'll be able to peel the sticker off. Although, this looks like it's not been on there for quite a number of years, so it might be a little bit more complicated to remove. But, uh, fundamentally, that's all you have to do. So yeah, bonus lesson there. Anyway, the uh, the games themselves, basically, uh, in order to clean them, you need, obviously, your cartridge, and you need a Q-tip, and you need Windex. A lot of people uh, often ask me why I don't use rubbing alcohol. Um, I've found, in my personal experience, that Windex works a lot better, and alcohol leaves a film, whereas Windex does not. Some people seem to believe Windex does damage, but it really doesn't. I've, I've never had any issues, and things seem to work like forever. So, if you want to use rubbing alcohol, go ahead. It probably won't do anything bad, although I just personally prefer Windex. But anyway, so you take the, uh, cart the Q-tip in the cartridge like that, and rub along the sides, like this, back and forth a few times, and uh, some dirt will come off. Not much in this case. This is surprisingly not that dirty, which is unfortunate. I was hoping it was dirtier so that you guys could really, really see it. But, uh, yeah, them's the brakes. Check it out. There's some dust on there. And then you take the dry side and go back and forth a few times and get more of that off. Now, um, 
generally, depending on how cheap your Q-tips are, these are really cheap, crappy ones, so I'll probably have to do this a couple of times. But, um, yeah, go ahead and do that a few times, and make sure your cartridges are nice and clean, because otherwise, you know, you just clean to the system board, and that'll become really pointless if you stick dirty games in there and just make the contacts dirty all over again. But if you make them clean, the thing will work for years to come. Our plastic is now completely dry, so it's time to put the system back together, which is remarkably easy. You just take your motherboard here, and uh, you just take the bottom piece, and basically just refit it right back into the molding. There you go. And uh, now we have to take our screws and put them back into place. Uh, you'll remember that uh, there's two screws that are special. They have thinner uh, threads, and they have to go in those two points right there. Then you take the uh, other, like, uh, goldish brass type of screws, whatever color you want to call that, and put them in all the screw points around the side. And then take your two black screws and put them into the cartridge slot. As you can see, holds nicely together. So let's uh, take the top part, right here, and we're going to put the button back in, the, uh, the pause button. And so you just kind of just push it in that way the, so that you can obviously read it. And... Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, you gotta kind of line it up a little bit, I guess. And there we go. Nice. There we go. It's in. And uh, then you take the uh, the lid here. And the only thing you gotta kind of uh, make note of is that the that right there is your your uh, power switch. And I recommend having it to the left. And then take when you've got the lid, make sure you slide this to the left too, so that they fit together. And then um, that's it. You just basically push down, and uh, you're good to go. So now you just have to turn it over and uh, put in your uh, six or five screws. It's back together and uh, it looks, I think, pretty good. Not perfect though. And uh, now it's time to make it shine, literally. We're going to use Pledge. Uh, I always kind of end up coating this on systems to make them like, you know, look a lot shinier, shinier and nicer and kind of bring back some of their original luster. And uh, I used to use WD-40, don't do that anymore. Now I use Pledge. Uh, I find it to work a lot better. Uh, do not use moisturizing Pledge. Use just like orange or lemon Pledge. It's really simple. All you got to do is uh, spray some on a paper towel like this. And then just rub it down like that. And uh, I don't know how well you can tell on camera, but uh, already I'm seeing a nicer, shinier coat come out. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish covering the top of the system and then I'll do the sides and the bottom and the back and front and I'll do under the lid there I guess and uh, then I'll show you what the end result looks like in a few minutes when it dries. And there we have it. Nice, shiny, and new looking. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. I think it cleaned up really, really well. I'm uh, pleasantly surprised. I mean, it wasn't like super dirty or anything, but this, this bastard looks pretty damn clean. So, uh... <laughs> I'm pretty happy about that, but um, does it work? I don't know. We'll we'll have to find out. So why don't you uh, why don't we join me and we'll go and uh, hook this up and um, test it out. I've got the system all set up now, and uh, here's that controller. Uh, the rubber band's still on it, but you can see I took the uh, sticker off. It came off nicely. Uh, it was actually surprisingly easy to get that off. I thought it was going to have a lot of residual adhesive. It didn't, so that was good. Uh, but anyway. Let's go ahead and try out the system. We'll lift up the lid here, which is kind of cool. I like that design. We'll pop in Ghostbusters. Actually, I like that design. I just wish that this could close with a game in it and, like, house the game. That would be kind of neat, but whatever. They didn't do that. So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, find out. Turn it on. Sega. Yeah, that's a good sign. And I don't know. Oh, yep, okay, there we go. Ghostbusters. And there's the, I wouldn't say familiar Ghostbusters theme, but there's something. Anyway, so the thing works, which is cool. And uh, that means that, uh, uh, got uh, one-handed there. That means that um, this has a secret game on it, I think. You want to see this? I don't know. I'm, I obviously haven't tested it, but uh, this is supposed to have a secret game on it. If you don't have a cartridge installed, you get an extra game. So uh, let's find out. And we see Sega, so that's a good clue. Ah, uh, yeah, Alex Kidd and Miracle World. That's what the secret game was. So there you go. I got a, in addition to getting um, the system and all those games. There's the bonus game of Alex Kidd and Miracle World on there, and it all works great. It's fully functional, and I think it looks really, really good now. So 
uh, anyone out there who is cleaning a Master System 2, um, I hope this helps you, and uh, thanks everybody for watching.